G'day everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today's video will be part two of Doug Gray's Toolmakers Clamp Kit. Uh, you've seen this footage last week when I cut up all the material. As I was saying in Doug's kits, he supplies all the material. If you don't wish to purchase a kit, you can just buy the plans uh, standalone and purchase the materials yourself. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about Doug Gray, I'll put his website details in the description below. So this steel is free machine grade steel and what I'm doing at the moment is just facing them all to, to length and just uh, setting it up there and just dropping it and facing. Now I won't show you the whole video for four parts because they're identical uh, machining techniques that I'll be using but I'll just show you a couple here. So just quick switch out, quick measure, make sure I'm in the right spot, just saves a bit of setup later and in we go again with that carbide tool and just facing off that end of material. So what I'm doing here is that I need to drop in with a grooving tool or a parting tool, just put a groove and that's so I know where to stop when I'm doing the knurl. And in the drawings here, Doug calls for three quarters of an inch which is 19.05 millimeters. So I'm just touching off on the inside of my tool there, or the outside of the tool, moving up on the longitudinal feed handle exactly uh, as my lathe is imperial so I moved it three quarters of an inch I'm just checking here as you know I'm a metric boy <laughs> I don't use much imperial personally I can't stand it but anyway when you've got an imperial lathe you've got to learn to work with it so just popping in here with a parting off tool you're just using it as it simply as a grooving tool switching out now to my knurling tool and I've just dropped the RPM of the of the old lathe down to about 100 rpm here a little bit of a oil on the shaft to help with the lubrication and these are a very good knurling tool you can really put in some positive pressure uh, and you'll notice that it clamps the pressure at 12 in the six o'clock position instead of forcing in on the side and distorting the metal it actually does a really nice knurl as well now, when I'm feeding here, I'm actually engaging the half now. I'm not auto feeding, so I'm actually uh, engaging like I'd be cutting a thread. I find that gives me a nicer knurl, a coarser knurl. And if I wipe it here, you'll see that that knurl looks rather well. Okay, in for the next one, and uh, I'll just show you this twice. So it's always good when you knurl to clean the material first. Um, as Doug supplies this kit, the size was already um, the nominal size. I didn't have to machine any off it. It was half inch material that he supplied, so I left it. I just uh, linished the end of it, just deburred it after facing it, of course, uh, marking my spot. And this time I didn't worry about a groove, I'd pop back in later, I, I thought instead of changing tools I'll just run straight in there with a knurl. I put a blue pen line on it just so I knew how far to go and not go too far. Once again you'll see this knurling tool, you'll see it roll over into the 12 and 6 o'clock position if you look at those two pins. And once again engage the half nut. And when I come to that blue line, I'm waiting for that inside of that knurling wheel to touch that blue line and disengage and pull out. Just popping in now with my ISCAR parting tool and putting that groove in just to make it easier when I flip it to the other side to do the uh, parallel turning. Now every one of these had to be centre drilled because I need to hold them uh, with a live centre. Popping in there with the Sutton Tools center drill. And away we go. So you can see here that I've got a piece of copper tube uh, held in the chuck. Now Doug supplied you the copper tube and you put a slit in it with a hacksaw. I actually took out a small slither which allowed it to clamp up a bit tighter. Now I'm just parallel turning here, I'm just speeding the footage up. You've all seen a lathe to parallel turning before. And I'm taking three passes with my lathe tool here. 
This is a carbide tip ISCAR tool. I'm trying to switch out to um, the stuff after at Live Tool Cells, but unfortunately, the ISCAR stuff I have are proprietary inserts, they're not um, standard ISO inserts. This is a cutting tool that Shane Edwards sent me. It's a Mitsubishi cutting tool. So thank you, Shane. It's uh, being put to good use, and I grabbed some uh, carbide bits off eBay for this tool. They're probably not the best. That the carbide's really soft, but anyway, what do you expect when you pay? I think it was five or ten dollars for a packet of ten. So the old saying, you, you can't expect too much. All right, dropping in here now with my threading tool, and what I'm doing here is cutting a eight millimeter, so a metric eight mil by 1.25 pitch. Uh, my lathe is an imperial lathe, so I'm not going to disengage the half nut. Although you can disengage and recatch it again, Max showed you that on his channel oh, about a week or two ago. He was doing some threading and he explained it. So go and check him out. I'm talking about Max Grant, the Swan Valley Machine Shop. So taking a full, uh, this is a full thread forming insert. And I'm just taking it easy with the threading. I'm threading at 100 RPM. Now, could I thread faster? Absolutely. Uh, will I? No, I won't. And the reason I won't thread faster is because my old Colchester brake is not working properly. It needs to be replaced. Um, I just can't afford to spend any more money at the moment in the shop. So things have just got to be put on hold. So this is actually live, um, real-time footage here and rewinding. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm just lightly holding the thread in the chuck and just facing off that center drill point. Now I realize that I shouldn't be holding on the threads like this, but I didn't know the clamp it. Uh, would, would be nice to have some little um, copper soft jaws made up for my lathe, but I don't have any, so I was just being cautious. Now, once I face that end off, you'll see here that I'll put the little nipple on the end. Now, two are, there's four of these you have to make for the parallel clamp set, um, and there's two pairs. So one has a thread all the way to the end, the second piece has this little uh, nipple on the end that receives into one of the jaws. And you can see here, so I'd actually drilled a 5mm hole and about 5mm deep. So you can see here the jaw going on. Alright, setting up in my mill now, I need to drill a hole. Doug was suggested that you drill a, a 3 16 so I think it was, hole in the end of the shaft so you can put a little pry bar in to tighten your clamps up if need be. Um, I'm going and dropping in here with a 5mm drill bit. Uh, using my Tashawn uh, probe here. And uh, this is a, a refurbished unit that I got from Arthur at Life Tools. So he looked after me with a good price. So I thought I'd put it to good use. It's um, I really need to make another arbor to hold it. As you can see, I don't have much um, room in the Z travel over the vise. So if I could make a smaller holder to hold that, it would fit a lot better. You see that I just split the difference in Y to find center and popping in here with a Sutton spot drill a TCI encoded one and coming up from the edge there so popping in I believe it was a quarter of an inch so 6.35 millimeters from the edge you'll see that that was probably the reading on the DRO and dropping in here now with that 5 mil drill bit drilling all the way through and I'm just holding this in a little collet, ER32 square collet block, and it just makes it so much easier. So I'll just disengage this collet now, and I'll speed the footy, footage up here in a minute, and you'll see me do the other three. So hopefully it won't be too boring with a, a bit of fast forward footage. And here we go. Spot drill, drill, Disengage out, swap over the cutting tool, 
back in. If only I could really uh, work at this speed, I'd be happy. But as you get older, you slow down the price we pay for aging. There we have it, four identical threaded rods. Now, Doug called for a chamfer or a radius on the end of the of the clamp body itself. Um, I just dropped in here with my old GMF grinder, and you can see here I've got the finishing attachment on it. And if you want to, I've got a video on actually making that, uh, making it fit my grinder, custom machining it out, and so yeah, go back if, you, if you're interested in that, or I'll put a card in here so you can have a look at it. It was a good little video that the. Uh, stuff I had to do. I was happy with the rounded edges. Well thanks for following along today. Um, I didn't get a chance to finish them all the way off but I've ended up making my shafts, my threaded shafts here that uh, supply the clamping force. Uh, drilled the hole in here. Now next week I need to finalise this and put a groove in here and make the little brass retaining plate. Now speaking to Max on the comments and he said look you don't need that of course, they'll still work, and that's correct, they will. But I think that little brass retainer plate will just add that cherry on top. So I also need to surface grind these. So I might do these at work this time on the old surface grinder we got over there, just to something different to spice it up. All righty, well, look, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Hello. What's your name? Hey, Marty. And who am I? Your pop. I'm your pop. Okay, say bye.